Welcome back, Zero K fans, to more analysis at dawn. I remain your host, Shadow Fury 333, and this last match today is going to be between North Chilean G and Dying Throne on Trojan Hills. Let's get started. Dying Throne going for Clokybot Factory, and North Chilean G going for Clokybot as well. And on Trojan Hills, I can't say I blame them. Good map for Clokybot Factory. Also, did you get a new art update or something? Because these clouds are really pretty. And Skybox in general is actually really pretty. I, I don't know if that's new, but man, it looks nice. I just noticed it on the reflection of the water in the outside, and it's like, oh, that's... That looks really nice! So yeah, good job whoever was doing that. I think... It's not Moose. I don't, it might be Moose, actually. I think Sprung was doing a lot of this stuff as well. But it looks so cool! It looks so pretty! This is already my favorite map aesthetically, and it just made it better. Anyway, starting out, Dying Friend getting a little bit of a... Yeah, a little bit ahead of themselves with the one Glade against two. North Chilangi already building up quite defensively. They do actually... Don't they... Yeah, they do have one Conjurer coming out at the start, whereas Dimefriend, while they also had a Conjurer, it... No, no, they don't. No, they don't. They really don't. Dimefriend focus a little bit more on their uh, on their opening economy and defenses, less so on their units, while North Chilean G, they've only just started getting energy structures. But at the same time, they have far larger of an army and should be able to get rid of pretty much everything Dimefriend throws at them, at least for now. And yes, the ground texture has also been upgraded, which is... Really cool as well. Like, overall, it just... Ah, looks so good. And yes, North Slane G has very little energy right now. But here's the thing. They're building wind generators on a map that, as I mentioned earlier, is really good for wind generators. I mentioned, like, a game ago. And this is also a map that, really, in general... Not just this map. In general, you can kind of get away with not having as much energy if you're able to push your opponent. If you stop your opponent from getting to you early on, you can get away with being a bit more metal than energy focus, so long as you don't excess. At this point, I don't know if I agree with North Chilean G building as many wind generators as they are, but they should be fine. They have the pickets coming in here. They they'll, those will stop the glaives, no problem. And, I mean, they have their own glaives as well, just in case. So overall, North Chilean G is in a safe position. They've got nothing to fear. And they've got loads of resources. All they've got to do at this point is just build an army and win. Dying Friend, on the other hand, they're also actually in a pretty strong position. Not as much energy economy. They haven't built as many wind generators, which they will soon enough, because obviously you kind of have to when you build metal extractors. But at the same time, they clearly are a bit more focused on just scouting out, getting an idea of where Dying Friend is. It feels like, sorry, North Chilean G is. It feels like Dying Friend, though, they just are not entirely sure where to look. They have a bunch of glaives around the map. They're clearly scouting out for expansions. North Chilean G, however, hasn't really expanded out yet. Neither player really has. Both players are focusing quite a bit more on their rushes. And to that end, Dimefriend might actually end up on top, depending on how this little fight goes. Ooh, both of them end off with 8 HP. Neither of them can really engage again. At the same time, though, Dimefriend keeping that... keeping the hill alive. So at least one of their glaives is able to engage in a way that's productive. But overall, Dimefriend, they've just set up for expansions. It's a big thing here. They have... The expansion over in the western hill, they have enough defenses there to keep that safe. At least the upper hill, the lower part, no. That's not happening. And the center is getting controlled by them as well, so Dimefriend is very rapidly getting a lot of resources to their name. While North Chilean G taking the safer route. Going in the back instead of going in the front, trying to just maintain this defensible position. And that should work out really well, actually. North Chilean G is already slightly ahead when it came to expansions, and while Dimefriend does have a lot of defenses set up, it's going to take a bit more time for them to get going, because at this point North Chilean G, able to get a bit of harassment in, and just generally able to keep Dimefriend on their toes, while on the other hand, no defensive concerns for North Chilean G. They've got nothing. There's nothing that's going to stop them, unless there's a massive assault in the back lines. I'm excuse me, I'm a bit surprised Dimefriend didn't go for the back expansion earlier, but they are now. I'm not entirely surprised, because they clearly want to force North Chilean G to get into a conflict up front. They clearly want to force North Chilean G to contest this front area where a lot of Dimefriend's strength has been placed. Not to mention, Dimefriend having taken this front aggressively, taking the backside, it's actually going to be a lot easier to hold because right now, Dimefriend could theoretically push in and take a lot of the expansions that North Chilean G could have, but North Chilean G chose instead to take the safer backyard expansions. Well, Dimefriend, if they're able to stop this glaive assault here from North Chilean G, They'll be able to take both the front and the back, no problem. Of course, the question is, can they stop this Glaive Assault? Which seems pretty likely, but at the same time, it, to no avail, as the Conjurer did go down. 
North Chilean G succeeded in their little assault over to the south side of the map, and that's slowing down Dimefront's expansion considerably. To point out North Chilean G right now, 25 metal per second. Now, a third of that's overdrive, but hey, that's fine. And that is going into the construction of these Reavers, which are going into possibly killing off Dimefront's commander. Two Reavers is definitely enough to kill a commander, as we're seeing right now, and the picket can't help in time. It does eventually, but it's not enough. Dimefront losing their commander, all their storage. They have quite a bit of energy as well in storage already. And right now, bit of a dark time for Dimefront. Don't have a lot of forces to deal with. They don't have a lot of, really, anything to deal with. Their economy is not in a great position, especially without that storage. And their army is really spread out. I, I see why they built up the way they did. They wanted to make sure that they had protected expansions going forward. But North Chilean G, with only seven metal extractors to their name, or actually nine now, but before they had about seven, on top of the overdrive, they were able to get loads of value and turn that into the Reavers that were able to just kill off the commander from Diaphragm's excessive aggression. So North Chilean G under a little bit of fire, but their commander should be fine. These Glaives won't have any opportunity to get in and deal enough damage to stop it. And right now, North Chilean G just sent in for that counterattack. Getting the hammers up, getting the, ro the Ronin up. Actually, it's not hammers anymore. It's not called hammers, is it? It's called slings. Getting the slings and the Ronin up. And Orphelius in chat pointing out that Dimefront did not build an early warrior, and indeed they did not. They were they have a warrior now, but an earlier warrior to stop the Glaives was not present. That might have helped as well had it survived long enough to help fight with the commander. It would have at least stopped that early commander push or commander kill push. But at this point, that is not the case, and Dimefront fighting from a disadvantageous position. While they do have enough to build up the south side, this is what I mean by the conjurer dying. Why that's important. Dimefront's only now managing to build up the southern expansion. They could have had that built up two or three minutes ago had that conjurer lived. Had it survived the assault, they'd actually be pretty close to parity with North Chilean G for the most part. Although it would have been pretty close to parity. But as it stands, North Chilean G has been able to push that commander kill into quite a lot of aggression, quite a lot of expansion. And, I mean, the right hill's likely to be theirs. This entire center section is turning into North Chilean G's. The south, the northwest, the entire northern half of the map, really, that's North Chilean G's. And Dimefront only now taking the south center. And that's assuming they're actually able to, even able to survive this assault coming in from North Chilean G right now. And if that doesn't happen, that is going to be game. And even if it does, North Chilean G with a great flank attack off with these glaives, half dozen glaives over to the side. I mean, they might be able to get in and deal the damage. The Lotuses are a threat. Considering the math of it, it should be a pyrrhic victory for North Chilean G if they go for it. But at the same time, that might also split up Dimefront's forces and force North Chilean G... Sorry, force Dimefront into a bad enough position that it could work. At this point, though, I don't think it's a major concern. North Chilean G is not going for it. They're probably aware that it would be suicide. But they're also likely aware they don't have to. There's enough of a contain here that they don't need to get in. Although they are going for it! Highly risky. If they manage to get the Conjurer, that'll still be worth it, but this is, like I said, likely to be a Pyrrhic victory. At the very least, all the Glaives are gone. The defensive Glaives are gone. The the defensive Lotuses don't actually cover the Metal Extractors, and two of the Glaives can get back in. That's not going to be enough, apart from the Metal Extractor kill potential, which has not been ex exercised. At this point, there is no way for North Chilean G to deal any more damage. Defense is, defense is being destroyed. That's something. I'll grant that. But this is Pretty much just a scouting run at this point, and North Chilean G able to get some information. They know what Dimefront has set up, they know what their economy is likely to look like. It's just that's not what I'm sure North Chilean G would have liked. Still, though, as mentioned, North Chilean G is so far ahead economically, it almost doesn't matter. This is really just a matter of maintaining a strong position while switching over to air. And between the Thunderbirds and the Phoenixes, there shouldn't be a massive problem once that's set up. I mean, it's obviously it's a combo game that has to be played here. And I don't see it being played right now as North Chilean G is actually coming, coming under a little bit of fire. Dimefront taking advantage of North Chilean G's rapid expansion and thus lack of defenses to deal with few, a fair few of these metal extractors. But North Chilean G able to stop it well enough. This one glaive here. This glaive over here I've got selected. That's the big story one. If it goes north, and it does, that's going to take care of about six metal worth of expansion. That could even things out. Actually, will even things out considering Dimefront's current economic situation. That being said, North Chilean G still has an advantage army-wise, at least in theory has an advantage army-wise. Looking at their current unit value, North Chilean G has a 3k advantage army-wise. That is huge. 
A lot of that's in the air, mind you, and of course that means it has to be based on combo play. But even then, North Chilean G is doing fine. They did, however, just lose a couple expansion areas. A couple metal extractors go went down. That's not great. But it's uh, it's not going to make a huge difference. They're still ahead. Not yet. Dimefriend can level leverage that into an advantage. Like, it is still good that they did that. It's just... You know, it's... It's a parody-making move. That's the big thing. At any rate, North Chilean G maintaining that army advantage. It's still the important thing, though. That army advantage being maintained by North Chilean G does mean North Chilean G can maintain what is effectively a contain in the center of the map. And while a few metal extractors from their side were lost, it's still... It's still not the biggest thing in the world. Especially with the glaive going down, that glaive could have gone forward... Dealt with a lot more. And even what it did deal with is still good. It still helped Dime Frame maintain, well, not quite economic parity, but get closer to economic parity. It could start to get away from the disadvantage they've had. But this is still such a tricky situation for Dime Frame. So heavily on the defensive, the center of the map has been essentially seeded North Chilean G. And right now, not a whole lot of answers. I mean... North Chilean G, at the very least, doesn't have as much air control yet, but they are getting it. These ra these Raptors are doing a fine job maintaining as best as possible. I mean, the Swifts, in large enough numbers, will be able to deal with the Raptors, but the Raptors are essentially designed to deal with Swifts. That is pretty much their job. And they're doing that job remarkably well. Though, admittedly, in terms of the numbers, it might not be enough, especially with the focus on the Vulture. That's fine, though. That's still a lot less information for Dying Frame to maintain their position on the map, what little position they have. Although I say that, as I say that, the reclaim coming in from Dying Frame is actually doing quite a bit to, in theory, even out the economy. Unfortunately, having either not enough, not enough storage or not enough construction power, they're not able to use that. Certainly not enough energy. Actually, that's the bigger thing. They lack the energy, and that's the thing I pointed out earlier in the match, is that they didn't have that many wind generators compared to North Chilean G. And that's kind of why. That's the thing, just as a as a takeaway tip, it's always good to build more energy structures than you theoretically need right now when Reclaim's on the table. And North Chilean G is set up for that. Dimefront, however, is not. So that's Reclaim that's denied their opponent, but it's not Reclaim they're directly using. And that's a bit of a shame. Because if you can use that Reclaim, especially considering the situation Dimefront's in, that could turn things around. And at this point, Dimefront, they're actually evening things out as far as Metal Destroyed goes. But in terms of overall unit value, North Chilean G is way ahead. The North Chilean G has so much more money invested in their army. They got a fairly strong position overall economically, though Dimefront is doing everything they can to essentially take everything they can. Even taking things that are right next to North Chilean G's base. North Chilean G in full view, losing these metal extractors over to the Northwest. That's almost rude. It's clever, but it's almost rude. And it's just honestly kind of funny. Still, though, North Chilean G, again, they have that economic advantage. Dime Frames attempt to equalize that, being stuffed by the lack of power, and ultimately, their air control is gone. Not even in terms of anti-air. I don't see a whole lot of anti-air either from the ground, so Dime Friend, and they're fighting an uphill battle, they're fighting an uphill battle into the sky. I'm not sure what you'd call that, an up-air battle, I suppose. And it's not going in their favor. We do finally see some gremlins, but it just feels belated. I mean, the Gremlins are going to do a fine enough job keeping the main base safe, but at this point, the entire field is belonging to North Chilean G. There's a few cheeky expansions here from Dimefriend, but really, look at the forces. Look at what's in play. Dimefriend has a few Ronin hanging around, a couple Glaives, and one Reaver, along with now a handful of Gremlins. That's it. And Dimefriend knows it, seeding the match to North Chilean G, who takes it, having had a unit advantage for the majority of the match, but Dimefriend held on valiantly throughout that entire thing considering that they lost their commander very early on, and overall didn't ever really have an economic advantage, or even parity. It was really that one bit where the reclaim came in. If that reclaim was used and not accessed, nah, that wouldn't have been quite enough. Never mind. It would have helped, but yeah. Yeah, that would have been, that would have been nice for Dimefriend. It would have been at least something. Would have gotten them closer, might have opened things up for them to expand more, or to have a larger, larger army to allow them to block off North Chilean G's advances. Especially considering Dimefront was actually starting to get a bit of value when it came to destroying their opponent's forces. 
But yeah, Dying Frame did manage to get that. North Shilling G got the early advantage and just rode that to the end of the match. And that's what happens sometimes. Yeah, overall, that match was essentially decided by the early commander destruction, which was in turn decided by Dying Frame not constructing as much early on. North Shilling G just getting a stronger economy slowly but surely from the start of the match. Dying Frame losing the... the the Conjurer down south was also a massive blow, because it meant the southern expansion, which is generally safer, wasn't expanded to until six and a half minutes into the game. And by that point, as we can see, six and a half minutes... Actually, can we see that's about here? That was around the point where North Shilling G and Dying Frame were about even. They were think, within six or so metal of each other. That southern expansion would have been enough to equalize that. Now, I'll grant that the Constructor did die several minutes before the next one came in. Like, Dying Frame could have gone back to that... That might have been an issue of management, like being distracted by North Chilean G assaulting from the front and then having to remember the backside too. And I could see that being a possible issue as well. We saw a couple other times where Dying Frame had units up in the front and they were just remaining idle. And idle units happen. That's the thing that, you know... it's I guess it's the thing that separates good players from great players is the amount of idle units there are, but I, really, I can't be one to judge when it comes to idle units. So yeah, that basically explains what happened. North Chilean G got an early economic advantage, held on to that advantage. Dying Frame didn't quite manage to ever quite equalize that advantage. And ultimately, when they had the chance to, there wasn't enough energy and build power to take full advantage of the reclaim. So, all things considered, good effort. Nicely done by both players. Nicely done defense by Dying Frame. I mean, ultimately, the siege broke. Or, they've... The siege broke. Ultimately, the siege broke them. But that's what happens when you have an early economic advantage that isn't answered. It just It gradually becomes a win. So that is that. Thank you for watching. And until next time, have a good night.